Hello, everyone. Welcome to Russia's World. Today, we have uh, two special guests about uh, it's on a uh, on a documentary called Free Puppies. We have filmmaker Samantha Wishman and uh, rescuer Monda Wooten. Welcome to Russia's World. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. And um, so my first question is, what uh, inspired you? Why are you rescuing animals, Monda? You talk a little bit about it in the documentary. Um, and uh, Samantha, later on, why did you decide to, to make this film? Maybe starting with uh, Monda, please. Well, um, in the film, I, you can see where I said that my little boy wanted a little black dog. And I gave in and went to a puppy mill uh, because I, in my mind, I thought that's what you do. You go buy a dog. And I went there and uh, I looked around and there was all these little dogs and these little small crates and it just didn't, it didn't, it didn't look well and it didn't feel good, mm -hmm. didn't feel right. And so, um, you know, I didn't know what to do about it at the time, but uh, and then I really didn't realize how bad that was until later on. But after I fell in love with this little dog, I started uh, appreciating everybody's love for their dog. And I just started seeing dogs, you know, I noticed the stray dog running through the neighborhood. I noticed the stray dog on the side of the road. Um, and so before I knew it, I was, I was just trying to maybe help this one dog or help this one dog. And then before I knew it, my whole life was dogs. And, uh, and it's real rewarding. Uh, I say that it's, it's, um, it's physically, uh, mentally and financially straining but it's very rewarding as well. It's very rewarding. Thank you. Yeah. And Samantha, how, how did you come up with this idea? Why, why this documentary? Uh, so this came out of a personal experience for me. I was helping my mom adopt a dog through uh, an app called Pet Finder, which connects adopters with dogs uh, who are looking for a home. And we found one who was in Mississippi and we fell in love and you know, felt like he was the right the right fit for us. And he came up on a truck and it was when I picked him up that I was really blown away by the fact that there were, you know, 80 dogs on this, this very big trailer. And the, the driver said that she came up every week uh, and that there were more of her out there. So I put that together and I was like, this is a very significant number of dogs making this journey. Uh, and I started to do some research and realized that it had been happening at a very large scale since Katrina and estimated over a million dogs have made that trip. Um, and the more people I talked to, there were a lot of people that had adopted these dogs who were very curious to know what was going on, uh, wanting to know more, and really didn't have a lot of understanding of what was happening uh, before they made the journey. So I felt like it was important to, to share that story. Yes, absolutely. I found it eye-opening for myself, sobering heartbreaking and occasionally hopeful, but mostly it was hard to get through the documentary. I found it difficult to watch, but I learned a lot uh, through it. So one of the things, a common refrain is authorities. Uh, the authorities are not uh, doing their part, right? And some of it is understandable. They say, well, these are animals. We have more important issues. At the same time, it's also not acceptable. No, it's not. I, I feel that uh, a community is judged by the way that it treats uh, its animals. Um, it's a uh, it's a uh, helpless, whether it be animal or people. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people have problems too, and I feel like that your community is judged by that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And it's also all uh, something that comes through is also the people are not bad. The people are good. They mean to do well. A lot of the people who have these animals, who hoard these animals, are, are not bad people. But there's a lack of information, a lack of knowledge. And so what I, what I really liked is how you were trying to get through uh, these people, talking to them, empathizing with them, and also having a, a local TV show to, to, to spread uh, knowledge. Uh, and the documentary will help, too. So what would you say, what was your experience with that, both? in terms of the documentary and the response to it, as well as in your, within your own community of, of, of spreading knowledge and education? Well, like you say, most people are good. Mm -hmm. 
And, uh, you know, the, there, there's something to being said to a person that, that just don't know, just, just don't know that, that that's a lack of knowledge. <laughs> but, but if they have, the, if their heart's in the right place, then, then you can normally work with them. And, and, you know, my early years of rescuing, I used to, uh, I went through the period to where um, I would get so aggravated and so upset at people, but, uh, but I had to learn uh, that, that you can't lose sight of what your goal is. And your goal is to improve the welfare of, of that animal or those animals that are involved. And so you have to work with those people because unfortunately animals are considered, uh, you know, property. And so those animals belong to that, those people. And so you have to continue to respect those people and, and just, I guess, kind of bite your tongue sometimes and try to get through it because, um, if you get angry at, at, for lack of a better word, the ignorance involved, if you get angry, then, uh, then who suffers? If you get angry and then the communication stops, it's the animals that suffer. And so, you know, you, you hadn't done a thing, but waste your time, spin your wheels. Mm -hmm. So you just have to stay focused. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Samantha, what was your experience too, like filming the documentary and the, the community and the people? And one thing I also noticed is uh, sadly that there are not many men involved, which is uh, a shame, right? And mostly women, which is wonderful, but I, I wish, you know, there were more guys involved. The animal, uh, uh, there were a few, the animal controller was, was male, I noted, but again, is that also maybe something that is related to the way we perceive gender and you say, you know, like, and probably the fear of, of, of spaying animals, neutering animals, you're like, well, as a man, it's like horrifying, right? So I can understand the re reaction of the men too. So Samantha, what is your impressions about that? Uh, I, we were interviewed by a woman, uh, Maria Melita, who's a New York radio DJ, and she has a podcast as well. And her theory, she said, um, she wasn't surprised that it was women, uh, but then we pointed out that there were a couple of men and she said, yeah, in the paid roles of executive titles. Yes. Um, yeah. So I think there's a lot of work that goes unsung and I think that women are often the ones who do that kind of work. Um, and, you know, don't you they, think, Sam, don't you think though, uh, women, women are caretakers. Women are caretakers and you know, women are caretakers and they, they will, they will do work for, out, without, you know, without the title, without, without getting paid. <laughs> Go ahead and say it, without pay. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, <laughs> um, but they're also, you know, they're the backbone of the community and they're the ones uh, okay. organizing and making change. And they're the ones that are, yeah, do, picking up, the, picking up the slack when the, the, Good, good for you kudos to you to you guys and uh, <laughs> i think it's uh, it's also that the, some of the male response horrifies me it's just shoot the dog it's easier to do oh, I, yeah. I, I find that terrible like that's just awful there's that's awful i i just can't understand that right there, so there are some men though there are a few i do know a few but there's very very few but you know i say that um that you know we can't really um discount the men involved like uh my husband my husband has uh i have i have definitely changed his his view and outlook on animals mm -hmm. over the years because um uh, you know he's actually brought in a few himself um and and he lets me do it you know he lets me do it and he don't complain about you know when i'm trying to help this little lady down the down the street or across the city or something you know when I'm trying to help her get her all of her animals done and um you know he don't really complain a, a whole lot about it you know his thing is just just don't turn my house into an animal shelter because we've been there before too <laughs> <laughs> and that's understandable too but is it maybe also like society at large that is uh, having a role here of the perception also like uh, I, I have a lot of empathy but uh, Amanda when you talk about the dog on a chain is like an imprisoned criminal I had never seen that before that way. So it's maybe again, some sort of lack of like uh, connections or certain things that we don't realize. So maybe again, through the documentary and through education, we can access more people and change the way of thinking and the way of responding to, to the plight of these animals. 
Well, education is the answer. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people, people, uh, people do need help with some resources. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the, the best, the best case is when you, uh, when you find these people that are having all this trouble or, or, or maybe not treating their animals quite the way they should, maybe not keeping them vetted, uh, spay and neuter, of course, uh, and, and, but they're open to listen to you and you can kind of uh, work with them and they respond well. And uh, those are the best cases. Those are the best cases. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, sometimes, you know, you've heard the saying, it's, it's hard to teach uh, an old dog new tricks. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we run into a lot of people that are just kind of real old school and they're like, you know, it's a dog, it's a dog, yeah. it's a dog, you know, uh, I'm not going to take it to the vet, you know, if it gets sick or whatever, I'm going to shoot it. I mean, we run into that here in the South yeah. and it's, it's, it's sad, it's sad. And, and so when you run into things like that, the best thing you can do is just try to move on to the next situation because you're not going to get anywhere there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Samantha, something that moved me a lot was the vets, the Vietnam vets and their experience. I mean, it seems that it could be a documentary just on them because I found them very interesting as, as, yeah. as people. So what was your experience, too, of uh, dealing with the, the kind of trauma that uh, accompanies, uh, in this case, vets who are kind of like the dogs, forgotten and, and, and lost in their own ways? Yeah, absolutely. And that could, cause they, we, we went back a number of times more than you see in the film. Um, and they had incredible stories that they really wanted to share. Uh, and they loved their dogs and they spent the money that they had on dog food. They were, um, they were really doing the best that they could. They just didn't have the, the capacity, the resources to be able to, you know, get them vetted or get them spayed and neutered. Um, so they were really overwhelmed. Um, but they, yeah, I, I was very, I was very, we became, uh, I want to say, yeah, we, we had a really strong connection with them and it was really um, um, part of a very surprise, like something I didn't expect at all was to go into their world. Um, but they, they had incredible stories to share. So it was a privilege to be able to talk to them and for them to be able to share. I'm looking at the, this is the cover of our DVD is Free Puppies. Uh, and this is their, this is his, this is a 1974 Winnebago uh, that one of the brothers drove across the country to California after he went to Woodstock. I mean, they, they just really have lived a life, uh, you know, and so much a part of the American story American history and they ended up here with all these dogs yeah kind of forgotten and not you know being taken care of and uh, I, I think taking care of the dogs and taking care of you know people that that need this kind of support but Mondo always says this is a community issue and this is a story about dogs but it's a story about communities coming together and like the women that we were talking about and how we support uh, you know people that and animals that, that can't uh, can't support themselves on their own. So I think it's a story about empathy and about uh, community caretaking. And thank they, you yeah, so much for the documentary, for an amazing documentary. Amanda, thank you so much for your amazing sure. work, your constant work. It's, it's really appreciated. And just here, uh, before we finish, just final question. Is there maybe a plan of making a series? Because I would love to see a series just following the different dogs and uh, the different stories. Is there something in the works or what could you say briefly? I can say that we are trying, uh, we're, we are actively trying and we think it would be great too. And so I think Monda's excited about that idea. <laughs> well, hey, I'm stacking the stories up every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just have a camera follow you throughout your days and uh, wonderful. Thank you so much. So we have filmmaker, Samantha Wishman, uh, a rescuer of dogs and also cats, by the way. Yes, yes, yes. cats too. Not just solely dogs. So that's, that's great. Uh, Monda Wooden, thank you so much for being on Rash's World and the documentary is again, Free Puppies, exclamation mark do watch it it's sometimes difficult to watch but absolutely rewarding and thank you so much for your beautiful work thank you, thank you Rosh. take care